There we go. Hey guys, it's Liz uh, with the Pampered Chef again. Uh, tonight we are getting ready to have some friends over tomorrow for a grill out. Um, and I'm making some guacamole. Um, and I wanted to show you one of my favorite tools to use for it. And it may be not the first thing you would think for it. Um, ultimately, we'll be using the mix and chop to mix it all up. Um, and that's a great tool for uh, doing ground meat while it's cooking. Um, it helps break it up and get it into that really nice size. Um, so any ground meat, beef, turkey, sausage. Um, and then I've also used it to combine uh, chicken salads. Uh, but one of my favorite things to use it for is guacamole and we eat it a lot at our house. Um, avocados are full of really good fats. Um, plus it's delicious. Uh, so first we're going to start with the avocado and you can see that I already prepped some, but if you haven't done an avocado before, it's really so much easier. Um, I was intimidated by them for a long time. So you're just going to cut all the way around and twist. Okay. And so then you get this big pit in here. Um, and we do sell an avocado tool. Um, people love it. I have just stuck with the knife because that's what I'm used to. Uh, but if you want a tool for it, we do do that. Um, I'm using our forged cutlery, which is really nice. The, uh, the shaft goes all the way through the handle and these have a lifetime warranty. So if you ever have anything wrong with it, uh, give me or another consultant a call and um, we can get it straightened out for you and get you a new one. Um, so you're just, and be careful when you're doing this because you don't want to cut your hand. Um, but you're just going to slam it into the, the piece there and twist and pull it out. Um, and I have my little trash bowl here. I like using our collapsible bowls for this. Um, and they do collapse. I was going to say, I don't want to <laughs> shove everything in my face. Uh, but they do collapse, so they store really small. They come with a lid. I like using them for trash bowls when I'm prepping stuff. Um, but so then the avocado tool scoops out. You can also use a spoon. This is our scoop loop, and it's good for so many things. Um, I like using it for the avocado. Because look at how cleanly no. that gets all the good stuff out. Um, it's great for peppers, for getting the seeds out of melons and squash. Um, what else? Um, you can use it after using our pineapple tool, um, pineapple wedger to wedge out and you're left with um, a little bit of that pineapple meat on the skin. And so you can use this to scrape that off and you get crushed pineapple and you can store that in some of our prep bowls to go in the freezer uh, if you don't need it right away or you can you know just hang on to it and it's so good on top of ice cream. So good. Um, so much better than the canned crushed pineapple just I try to use fresh whenever I can or whenever I remember to get everything I need at the grocery store um, please, I'm not the only one who forgets to get things at the grocery store am I okay I hope not. Um, so yeah this takes a second but you know you're not wasting any of that goodness and avocados um, you know, can be expensive depending on when you're buying them. Um, I think that these were like a dollar, which isn't too bad. Um, and of course, you know, if you're getting organic or depending on where you are in the country, um, things can be a little bit more expensive. Um, when you're picking out an avocado, you want a nice dark color if they are green. These are Haas avocados um, and that's typically what I buy. That's what I have the most experience with. 
Um, you want this nice dark brown color. Uh, the green, they're going to be hard and they're not ripe yet. And those are certainly okay to buy, um, but not if it's something that you're planning on serving right away. Those are going to need a day or two um, to soften up, particularly if you put them in a brown paper bag, they soften up a lot quicker. Uh, now, avocado, um, but yeah, so, and it'll be soft. You don't want mushy, but similar to, I would say a touch softer than a tomato you want it to be. Um, and that's, I think, one of the things that made avocado so intimidating for me is they're, they can be difficult to judge. Um, and once you get them out, they can oxidize quickly. And that just means when the flesh hits the air, they can start to turn brown. Um, it does not affect the taste or um, anything other than how it looks. And so because we're serving this to people, we want to try to avoid that. Um, we like a lot of limes. So typically I do like four avocados with two limes. And so I just cut the limes in half. Um, and this is our citrus press, which is great for lemons, limes, um, smaller things like that. And you want to put the cut side down, which is kind of counterintuitive because you think that it would cup it, but upside down and you just press and look at all that juice coming out. Um, and that will actually turn the skin inside out. So you're not going to waste anything, any of the good juice. Um, and this is a great way to add some citrus flavor to water or tea, um, anything that you need to add something to. Um, and if your lemons or limes are hard, a nice way to make sure that you can get extra juice is just to roll it on the counter with the heel of your hand. And that just kind of loosens everything up in there so that you're going to get a little bit more juice. Um, and what's nice about this is it also catches all the seeds, so you're not having to fish them out later, um, which is what happens a lot to me when I'm trying to uh, just use my hands and be fast about it. Then I end up with seeds in my water that I'm sucking up through my straw, and who likes that? Uh, my husband John is my film crew tonight. Uh, do I have any comments or anything that I'm... No? Okay. I have one person on there right now. Okay, cool. Two. Two? Like he's awesome. kind of like bouncing. I don't know. I don't know if that's a running tally of how many people jumped on or if that's just how many people are watching it. Gotcha. Well, welcome. Um, and one of the nice things about getting the lime juice on there right away is that helps prevent it from browning. Um, so we're going to do in some onion. And what I'm going to do to get this to dice it because I hate dicing and I'm not good at it. I really, I think one day would like to take a knife skills class. Um, but I haven't done it yet. And until that time I have awesome pampered chef tools that are going to make it easier. Um, this is our manual food processor. I have to admit before I tried it out at a freezer workshop before I joined, I was a little skeptical. I had my big seven cup um, electric one, but honestly, now since I used this, um, and I still love my big one for big projects, like when I'm making a bunch of salsa or, uh, kneading dough or that kind of thing. But for a nightly basis, when I need to dice onions or chop carrots or that kind of thing, I love this guy. Um, it has a three cup capacity, the blades and the cup are both dishwasher safe. Um, the lid is not, um, but that's a quick, easy wipe down. And so it just pops in. You don't have to lock it or twist it or anything like that. Um, and there is, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little lock mechanism right there that keeps the handle down for storage. Um, and so we're going to just dump some onion in here. We're going to do this in a couple of batches. Um, but yeah, my electric one is 
so big and bulky and heavy to drag out. And I just, I don't like having it on the counter all the time. So yeah, all you do is take the heel of your hand and just press. And you wanna check and kind of see where it is. Right now I have some big chunks yet, so I'm gonna keep going, try and break some of these up. Um, and you know, you can do smaller batches. You can, uh, some people like really big chunks and with salsa, I do. Um, if I'm browning ground beef, I like to have bigger onion chunks. Although now I've started doing them a little smaller so that they hide from my son. And honestly, I'm wondering, because that was a big onion, so I'm thinking that that might actually be enough onion. What do you think? Um, and, you know, we can always taste it later, and no. if it needs more, we'll add more. <laughs> can you guys hear Jackson in the background? Alright, so we're going to put the blades back in, and we're going to hang on to that onion in case we need it. Um, but jalapeno and, you know, there are jalapeno lovers and there are haters out there. Um, if you don't like heat, you want to remove all of the seeds and ribs because with any pepper, that's where all of the heat is. Um, we, well, John likes it a lot hotter than I do. So we do it at a medium, <laughs> uh, but that way there's enough, almost enough heat for him and not too much for me. Um. And again, I'm going to use the scoop loop, but this time I'm going to use the skinny side here. Can you guys see that there are little teeth on this? It's, it's blurry. Okay. Um, but it's so nice because this works great to get the guts out of bell peppers. Um, I think that I mentioned squash earlier and using it for... Um, uh squash and the the um pineapple so that is you know it just makes it nice and easy and you know that way you're not having to fight it i used to use a grapefruit spoon which actually does work pretty well but um this is easier i'm gonna add about half of this onion that's left i think I used a little extra avocado, so. And just same thing. Um, you know, this is great for, you can do baby food in this with uh, steamed veggies and either water or juice. It's really nice to do the juice um, or the water that they were steamed in. Ooh, I'm smelling those peppers, those are strong. Um, because then you're not losing any of the food's nutrient value to the water. Um, and something that I meant to do, but this is a great tip. Before you work with peppers, um, especially the hotter ones, because, you know, those oils can stay on your skin and I'm going to have to be careful taking my contacts out later tonight. Um, but a great tip is before you cut into the pepper, you want to, uh, rub olive oil or vegetable oil or something, um, like that on your hands, because that's not going to affect the flavor at all. Like maybe a scented lotion, but it's going to soak into your hands and block the pepper oils from absorbing into your hands so that um, it's not going to be as difficult to get all of those juices off. Um, and garlic. Do I have any garlic lovers out there? Uh, I was about to use the scissors press for it. Our garlic press is awesome. <laughs> um, it is you don't have to peel the garlic at all and you don't have to cut the ends off. You just put the garlic in and press. And I use a knife cause see there's some stuck there. So I just use a knife and scrape that off and then 
go for it again. Um, and this is, you know, fresh. I just, I'm going to go to my grave saying that fresh is better. But it really is so much better than that, than the jars you can buy. I know that that's convenient, but look, with not having to peel this or anything, look it's at how easy this is. Is the, is the um, is the jar really that, that much more convenient? I don't think so. And, and a head of garlic is super cheap. Um, and it adds so much flavor to your meals. Um, I think a head of garlic is like less than 50 cents. Um, but you know, you can buy a couple of them at a time, keep them in your cupboard. Um, and then they're ready to go when you need them. I'm just going to rinse my hands off real quick. All right. And so now what we're going to do is we want to season this a little bit because no one likes bland guacamole, right? Gross. Um, some salt. And pepper. Yeah, salt and pepper, man. Add it to everything. And, you know, you don't need a ton of either, but they add a lot of depth to whatever you're cooking. And I know that I have touted fresh is best, but I forgot to get cilantro. And I have cilantro in a tube, which is actually surprisingly pretty good. And so I'm just gonna do a squeeze of that. Um, I would do, I really like cilantro, and I know it's a love-hate kind of thing. Um, but if I was using fresh cilantro, um, and my garden's not up yet. I would probably use about half a bunch <laughs> of cilantro. We really like cilantro. And then I'm going to give it mm, about a teaspoon maybe of cumin. And you know, this is another thing you can do to your taste. Um, that's one of the best things I love about cooking at home is that you can customize it to your family's taste um, and save money. And so again, mix and chop. This was intended for, um, this was intended for meat, but we have come up with so many uses. Um, mashed potatoes is a really good thing to do with it. So see, I am just, you know, working this and this is how you would do anything else. Um, you know, meat or um, the mashed potatoes, mashed cauliflower is a really nice lower carb substitute for mashed potatoes. Um, we actually put that on top of shepherd's pie sometimes. Um, but it has more nutrients and less carbs. So if that's something that you're watching, um, Give it a try. It's actually really good. Um, I've done it a few times and not told John, and he hasn't noticed the difference. So, shh. Um, huh? But one of the things that I like about this is, you know, you can get it, you can leave it as chunky as you want, or you can, you know, keep going at it. Um, but it will leave some chunks. And I am not... So I, I like my uh, guacamole kind of chunky because I don't want to eat baby food. I didn't like it when my son ate it. I don't like it now. And so I like it a little chunky. But so look at how quickly that all came together. Um, and this is going to be so yummy tomorrow because, you know, there are plenty of times that I sit down... <laughs> And, you know, we'll make this after Jackson's in bed, and this will be our treat to ourselves. Um, but it's really good after it has a minute to kind of get the flavors together. Another trick to keep it from browning at all, especially if you're not serving it immediately, is to take some cling wrap. And you want to, you don't want to cover the bowl necessarily, well, you will eventually. But that with this layer, what you want to do is you want to try and get down on top 
you want to try and make contact with the guacamole. Um, and so that, what that does is that prevents any air that gets through the lid or um, any wrap that you do on top, that helps prevent it from getting to the guacamole. Um, and now to cover this up, I'm going to use, these are our new fit lids. Um, they come in a pack of three and I really like them. They're stretchy. Um, they work with all of our bowls and, um, I've been hearing from customers that they work with a good variety of non pampered chef bowls too. Um, what I really like about them is they come with this little vent. So there's this little hole here. It's attached, so you're not going to lose it. But so this is if you're putting it in the microwave because these are microwave safe, dishwasher safe. Um, but you know you can put something in the microwave and vent it, so it's not going to explode all over your kitchen. Um, but for this, we're going to leave the tab in, and then just stretch it over the top, and that is that. I like to press a little bit of the air out um, and it typically won't stay that way. Sometimes the air will come back in so it's not a full airtight seal but um, it's really good for most purposes. Um, I haven't had any food spoil while I've been using them um, but yeah so I hope you I hope you enjoy some guacamole and if you're coming over tomorrow we're having some guacamole fresh. Um, Thanks for watching.